Hi, I'm Ed Bradley and I'm a Chesapeake Master Gardener and I'm here at the Chesapeake Arboretum in Chesapeake, Virginia. And we're on this historical, historic property uh, that goes back almost 400 years as agricultural farmland. We have a historic house here, uh, parts of which go back to the 18th century. And this became a Chesapeake Park about 25 years ago. And during that time, we've had a strong, strong volunteer effort uh, to make this park what it is today. Uh, we have a mixture of things going on here. On the grounds, uh, several acres, we have native and introduced trees that have been planted to demonstrate urban forestry techniques here in coastal Virginia. And then we have a mature hardwood forest, uh, linear suburban greenway that you can see here with about three miles of trails across the street. Uh, so we're going to spend some time today on the Red Blaze Trail, the half mile, mile trail in the middle where the most diversity is uh, in, in the uh, arboretum. Before we go into the woods, I want to highlight a couple of trees here on the grounds. And the first one is Florida maple, Acer floridanum. Uh, this is also known as southern sugar maple. Uh, and this is a tree that grows in the southeastern United States. We are here in USDA hardiness zone 8, which goes from southeast Virginia through the southeastern United States and over towards the Gulf Coast. So that's a unique part of this state. Uh, that's where the warmest part of the state, of course, because of the effect of the Atlantic Ocean and the Chesapeake Bay. So this is one that grows in the southeast. It's a close relative and looks like sugar maple, Acer saccharum, which grows north and west of here. This tree uh, was rescued from a road construction project in a part of our city, and it was going to be cleared. So we went over there and dug some of them up, and it was a small tree when we put it in, and now it's turned into a, a beautiful part of our campus. I'm here at an American chestnut, Castania dentata, and we planted this tree uh, here on the grounds of the Arboretum uh, about 10 years ago. And it was a real thrill for me to be the one to plant this tree. This is the tree that was basically wiped out by the chestnut blight that was introduced in America in the early 20th century. Uh, one, some people have called it the biggest ecological disaster in North American history. Billions of trees were wiped out. But the American Chestnut Foundation is trying to find a way to bring back blight resistant trees and we did get this one tree to plant here so it's a reminder of some of the issues that can happen when we don't take care of, uh, of our trees and be careful with the kind of things that we introduce into our environment. Uh, I want to explain the sign system we have here uh, on our native tree trail. We have the common name, the botanical name, and the family name. That's the natural classification system we use on signs, and that's based on reproductive similarities. But the artificial system that we use in field work, we also use to help you identify the plants out here. So the fourth line tells you whether it's deciduous or evergreen, whether it's native or not. Out here, they're all native, whether it's a tree, shrub, or vine. And then the leaves, which are the primary way we identify trees in the field and in most field guides, it mentions the critical things to notice there to help you narrow down what tree it is. So I want to talk about this sweet gum tree with one of the tongue twister botanical names, liquid ambar styras affluor. But here is this tree, and this is a very common tree here in coastal Virginia. It's a tree that is used in landscaping and is even recommended, but it has one big drawback, and that's these gumballs. And most homeowners and others who have these trees will complain about these gumballs because it makes it difficult to mow your grass and so forth, and they're hard to rake up. But this is a beautiful tree. It has interesting foliage. It looks like a star of five lobes, sometimes seven, and has outstanding fall foliage, perhaps the best fall foliage of any of our native trees. Uh, I should point out that uh, Alexander Hamilton wanted sweet gum to be the national tree, and he planted 13 of them for the 13 colonies at his home in New York City. Uh, our next tree is Tula poplar, Liriodendron tulipifera. And notice this tree is in the magnolia family. So it's related to southern magnolia, sweet bay magnolia, and some of our great uh, magnolia trees. Uh, but notice this is also a very large tree. Probably our biggest trees here in the woods are these tulip poplars, but they're not our oldest trees because they're fairly fast growing trees. Uh, they have beautiful flowers in about May or so that are yellow, green, with orange in there. Uh, you don't usually see them easily because they're well up in the tree 
but you'll sometimes see them on the ground. Very interesting leaf, which is four lobes. Looks like the top's cut off of a star-shaped pattern. Uh, so this is one of our great native trees. Well, we've just entered the woods here uh, at the Chesapeake Arboretum, and notice this area is cleared out. We have had a significant problem in certain parts of the Arboretum, including this area, with invasive plants, uh, including Chinese privet, English ivy, and Japanese honeysuckle. On some of the pictures you'll see today, and you've seen some already, you see English ivy or Japanese honeysuckle on some trees that we're still trying to remove. But this was cleared out by volunteers and staff, and so it's Part of it is getting rid of the invasives and the other part is putting something else in here. So we decided to plant one of our iconic coastal Virginia natives, Atlantic white cedar, Camiciferus thyroides. So this is a, a tree that was uh, common in coastal Virginia, but now is not. And they often grew in pure stands. So what we've done here is plant a bunch of them together to, to simulate that, uh, that stand that you used to see uh, in Dismal Swamp and other places here in the on the coast. This is a uh, scale-like leaf and uh, so leaves can either be broad and flat like you see on tulip poplar and sweet gum or they can have you can have needles like you see on a pine tree or a bald cypress or they can be scale-like. They're technically needles, they're very small needles pressed against the twig which you see on Atlantic white cedar and eastern red cedar. Our next tree is red maple, Acer rubrum, and this is a very large red maple as you can see here. And uh, this has been called the octopus tree because of these roots that are sticking out here. This tree has the widest north-south range, range of any eastern native tree. It grows from Nova, Nova Scotia to southern Florida. And we are here in about mid-January uh, in Chesapeake but this tree is one of the first signs of spring. We should get some flowers in the next three or four weeks or so, uh, well before spring hits that, and tells us that spring is coming. We'll have reddish flowers and then reddish fruits that we can see in the canopy all through coastal Virginia. I do want to explain, explain our trailblazers on the tree here. And we have white, which you follow to do the central loop, and we have uh, orange on the southern loop and yellow on the north loop. So this is something you often see in parks to help guide you through the trail system. But our native tree trail, which is a sort of subcomponent of some other trails, including the central loop, is painted red. So that's what we're following here today. Our next tree is American elm, Ulmus americana. And this is another important tree in the eastern United States. It was hit hard by Dutch elm disease starting in the 1930s. But a lot of American elm trees have survived, including this one here. And they were considered a great urban forest tree because it had a vase type shape. And this tree has that vase type shape you can see at the top instead of the lateral branching that you see on a lot of trees. That's why it was a great street tree because you never had to prune it. It just went like this and went over the streets. And you didn't have to limit up with the horizontal branching. So this is an important tree and we have some nice specimens here at the Chesapeake Arboretum. Our next tree is pawpaw a Semino triloba, and this is our most common tree here at the Chesapeake Arboretum. It spreads by suckers, underground uh, rhizomes, and you can see there's multiple ones here. There's a bunch right across the trail there. Uh, it's a small tree, doesn't get to be real big. It's an understory tree, has big leaves. It looks tropical, and it's in a family, custard apple family, that's mostly tropical. But one of the interesting things about it is it has reddish brown flowers in late winter, early spring. And then in the fall, it has a small banana-like fruit that's edible. Also popular with wildlife, so they usually get it first. But this is a great tree, it has multiple common names, and one of our favorite trees here at the Arboretum. Here we are on one of the 11 bridges at the Chesapeake Arboretum. It crosses this stream called Star Run. And this was dug as an agricultural ditch to drain the farmland uh, years ago but it's turned into a beautiful meandering stream. And you can see uh, the trees on either side, it's a riparian forest buffer. And this drains into Great Bridge Marsh, which goes into the southern branch of Elizabeth River, which goes into the Chesapeake Bay. So this is part of our Chesapeake Bay watershed. Our next plant is Virginia stewardia, stewardia malacodendron. And you can see here, it's a deciduous native shrub or tree. It's normally a shrub, but it can get big enough 
to look to have a tree habit. And notice this is in the tea family. This is the same family that camellias are in, and camellias are introduced from Asia. We have camellias here in Camellia Cove in a separate garden, but this is a native tea family plant. And what really makes this plant shine is when the flowers come out. This is a beautiful white flower, and the stamens are purple and blue. So it's, it's a real showstopper and considered one of our most beautiful flowers on any native tree or shrub. Our next tree is Sweet Bay Magnolia. And you can see here, this is a Magnolia virginiana, and it's in the Magnolia family. So this is a relative of the tulip poplar we saw earlier. And this is also one of our great native trees, especially suited for landscaping for a lot of homeowners, because it's a small to medium tree that can fit in a lot of situations. And this tree, here we are in January, and it still has leaves. This tree is semi-evergreen, so it'll hold on to its leaves some during the winter, let some go, and finally uh, maybe have a few left by the end of the winter. But it has a beautiful flower, a very fragrant flower, and has this cone-like fruit that you see on the big southern magnolias, only it's smaller. But this is a highly recommended tree. Also a great tree for wet conditions. If you have a spot that requires wet conditions, this tree will grow there. Here we have an American beech, and you can actually pick out these beeches in the forest here in the wintertime because they retain some of their leaves, the light brown papery leaves there. And of course, beech has a very distinctive bark, a smooth bark. Some people say it looks like an elephant's leg. And the buds are also distinctive in the winter. They look like little cigars, very small, a, a skinny, narrow buds that are distinctive. But this is uh, also one of the great trees of the eastern United States and can be a very large tree. Our next tree is Devil's Walking Stick, Aurelia spinosa. And this is in the ginseng family. But this is a native tree that's often overlooked. Uh, and you can see these are smaller trees. This tree suckers and spreads by underground rhizomes as well as by fruit. And so we have a bit of an opening in the canopy here. Some people have tried to plant this in their home landscapes will oh, notice that it spreads and creates a bit of a maintenance problem. But normally here in the woods, it holds its place. But once we had this opening in the canopy, we have some larger ones nearby. Uh, this one started to come up. Notice it has these very sharp prickles that are distinctive on the bark. And it's almost hard to believe, looking at it here in the wintertime, has a very, very large compound leaf, three or four feet long, and looks tropical. This and pawpaw, both look tropical, even though we're here in coastal Virginia. So this is a really interesting tree, uh, understory tree, uh, in, in here at the Arboretum. Our next tree is Swamp Chestnut Oak, Quercus Michoui. And you can see it right here. This is a very large tree. In fact, the national champion tree is at Stumpy Lake Natural Area in nearby Virginia Beach. So these can be very large trees. Notice the big straight trunk. Just an absolutely beautiful tree. The vine you see here is supplejack, and this is a native vine growing up into the tree. This is the largest supplejack vine we have here at the Arboretum, and it is part of the native ecosystem system of the forest. So we're at our last stop here today on our tree tour, and this is bald cypress, Taxodium disticum. This is a city tree of Chesapeake, and like live oak, this is a world-class tree. These trees can live to be over 2,000 years old, and they're remarkably adaptable. They can grow in standing water, where you'll see the famous knees that come up, or they can also grow in tough urban conditions. It's also a deciduous gymnosperm. So you can see here there's no needles on this tree at this time of year. So most gymnosperms are evergreen, and this is a, a, an exception to that. But we want to thank you for coming to the Arboretum today, and you can check out information about us at the Parks and Recreation website at cityofchesapeake.net. We'll open sunrise to sunset and encourage you to come out and enjoy the different features we have here. Thank you.